What we see when we look at the brain is the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the part of the brain that houses rational functions and makes human beings unique. It is divided down the middle into two halves called the cerebral hemispheres, which are connected by a thick band of fibers called the corpus callosum, which send messages back and forth between the hemispheres. The left part of the brain is more of the rational side, being that this is the side that responds to verbal instructions, is planned and structured, structured and prefers talking and writing, where the right side of the brain is more intuitive. It tends to be spontaneous, likes drawing and manipulating objects, and is free with feelings. Each hemisphere of the cerebral cortex is divided into four lobes by various grooves, grooves and bumps known as sulci and gyri, which can also be seen on the surface of the brain. The first lobe located in the front of the brain is called the frontal lobe, associated with reasoning, planning, and parts of speech. Located in the middle section of the brain is the parietal lobe, which is associated with processing sensory information such as pressure, touch, and pain. Located on the bottom section of the brain is the temporal lobe. It is important for interpreting sounds and the language we hear. Last but not least, located on the back portion of the brain is the occipital lobe. This portion of the brain is associated with visual processing. Situated at the base of the brain is the cerebellum, also known as the little brain. It controls motor movement, coordination, balance, equilibrium, and muscle tone. Located at the top of the brainstem and buried under the cortex is the limbic system. With a set of structures, the limbic system is involved in many of our emotions and motivation, partly those that are related to survival. Just under the limbic system lies the brainstem, adjoining and structurally continuous with the spinal cord. Neurological functions located in the brainstem include breathing, digestion, heart rate, blood pressure, and arousal of being awake and alert. Phineas Gage had an open brain injury after his accident, which means that the hole in his head gave his brain swelling root, but the wound was open to infection. On the other hand, in a closed brain injury or concussion, the rattling br bruises the brain and the bruised tissue swells. The brain swells, but the skull remains the same size. A swollen brain can jam itself so tightly that it will cut off its own blood supply and also cut off oxygen to parts of the brain long enough to cause permanent damage and death. After his accident, Phineas's demeanor completely changed. Once easy to get along with and enjoyable, he was now only able to have peaceful interaction with the horses he worked with. He was irritable and stubborn one moment and wishy-washy and vague the next. Phineas did not die from this accident because the tamping iron that struck him missed all, of, missed all of the vital and necessary to function parts of his brain. What it did destroy though was a large part of the frontal lobe of his cortex, which is what caused his change of character. cells differentiate. It's the process that an embryo goes through as it's changing from one cell to a multicellular organism. The one cell it starts with is a standard cell that could turn into anything. Its size, shape, membrane, and metabolic activity all change to become a specialized cell of a certain type. Once the cell has differentiated into a nerve cell, it's called a neuron. But what exactly is that? A neuron is a nerve cell that transmits information by chemical and electrical signaling. It's made of a soma or cell body, dendrites, axons, and synapses. The cell nucleus is in the soma. Dendrites and the axon branch off the soma, but there can only be one axon, whereas there are several dendrites per neuron. The dendrites receive synaptic signals from other neurons, and the axon transmits signals to other neurons. They don't ever touch, but the space between them is called the synapse. Neurons form intricate webs of connections with each other, and most of them are in the central nervous system. The word synapse comes from the Greek syn, meaning together, and haptine, meaning to clasp. At the synapse, presynaptic and postsynaptic sites transmit electrical and chemical signals from neuron to neuron. Presynaptic sites that send signals are usually on the axon, and postsynaptic sites that receive signals are usually on the dendrites. There's only one axon per neuron. The axon doesn't branch off as much as dendrites do, but instead it ends in axon terminals where signals are sent. 
Neurotransmitters are chemicals that transmit the signals from neuron to neuron. They start in the synaptic vesicle under the membrane of the presynaptic site. They are then sent out into the synaptic cleft where they re attach to receptors on the dendrite or the postsynaptic site. Synaptic connections are what defines a working brain. We need to keep our brains healthy and active as we grow older. Two good ways to do that are physical exercise and playing engaging computer games.